Afternoon folks, here we are with our um, summer 21 and this is paper 6-1 and question number 6 obviously of the 0654 coordinated sciences syllabus. Now we're doing here an experiment on electricity. Okay, first thing we've got to do is a little bit of a setup there. We've got the resistance wire, a sliding contact, um, a voltmeter attached across in parallel sorry, to a lamp and an ammeter in series. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change L and we're going to measure A and uh, the current and the voltage, I and B. Now, I think it's worthwhile at the beginning of this one paying attention to the setup here because you will have to draw um, a circuit later. And actually, the circuit you have to draw is very similar to this one. All you have to do is make sure you change a couple of components. So just make sure if you're not sure about that um, setup that you've got there, make sure that you're kind of familiar with the symbols with what you're looking at and what exactly the experiment is. And before we do that, we've got a bit of reading to do. First thing we do, all we're doing is um, trying to read the ammeter. Okay, here we've got 10 divisions going from 0 to 0 0.2. So each one is going to be 0 0.02. Okay, and if you notice here, we're just, we go to 0 0.2 and then we've got two more divisions. So therefore we've got a 0 0.24. And I always like to write it down somewhere um, next to the meter just so it's easier for me to remember it. In this case, each division is going to be 0 0.1 and so therefore we've got 2.5, 2.6. Okay, so there's our first point there. Record in the table the current and the potential difference. We're going to put in 0 0.24 and 2.6. And then we're, uh, we have a question about the, um, the process. We're told in the description that the student turns off the um, experiment between uh, take, when, when he's taking readings, okay? So we're asked why he might do that, okay? And I've, I've suggested a couple of things here, all right? Um, I've said here to prevent overheating, okay? Because we know that as a circuit runs, then the components will get hot, and then th this will cause a change in the resistance, okay? It will also cause a uh, waste in energy, okay? Um, again, as I've done in previous videos, I've gone a bit over the top with uh, it will prevent him from getting a shock because obviously if you are changing things in a circuit, you would want to stop the um, electricity running through it so that you don't get a shock yourself. Again, it's probably a bit over the top, but you know it's not. It's never never um, too over the top to be too safe with electrical currents. Okay. Um, if you notice the answer here, answer scheme talks about the cells running down, so that's the idea here of stopping the battery from using up all the chemical energy stored in it. So don't worry here if you've got a different answer to that. This is probably one of the expected answers and probably the most expected answer, but it's not necessarily the only answer to this question. Okay, so do make sure that you are, um, you are, you know, thinking about your answers when you're marking it. Don't just go with what's in the mark, mark scheme to talk about preventing overheating would also be a valid one as well. Maybe the shock is a bit over the top, so let's stay away from that one. Okay, afterwards. We are asked to calculate the power. Now it's a core paper, so we know that P is equal to IV or P equal to VI in this case. We've got two values, 0 0.24, 2.6, and we're multiplying them. And we're just gonna enter that value into our table, remembering, of course, to enter the units. And I think I've seen a lot of students not get that mark. Um, mainly they just miss it, a bit nervous in the exam. Anytime you see some dotted lines, that means there's something to do. And similarly, anytime you have a mark or a question, um, you have to do something, okay? So if you go through your paper and you find, oh, I don't really know what I did there, um, have a check, okay? Because in this case, there's no space underneath the question, you're writing into the table. Okay, we're then asked to state how the results in the table show that the brightness decreases as the length increases. Well, let's see, the brightness is related to the power. The more powerful the lamp, the brighter it will be. You notice here our numbers are going from 0 0.62 all the way down to 0 0.31. So as you notice here, the power decreases as the length increases. And therefore, the brightness is going to decrease as well. The lower the power on that lamp, the um, lower the brightness of that. Okay. Um, and that's, as again, you can see that in the answer. They have gone with the power decrease as length decreases. But they've also said that the current and potential difference also go down as well. You notice that pattern, they're all decreasing values. Personally, I find that a little bit tricky because um, you'd have to specify that both of those things decrease. Okay, in my world, so I think it's much easier to go with power. 
in this case. All right, uh, last few questions, okay. Another student suggests that the potential difference is proportional. And what that means is that as V, as um, L goes up, sorry, V goes up. So we're being, we're testing this statement. The, 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 the potential difference is proportional to length. Well, as you can see in our table again, as L goes up, V very much goes down. Okay, and so therefore the student's um, statement is not justified. And you can see that as L increases, V decreases, and therefore they're not proportional. Okay, they are not proportional. And again, there's similar uh, statements here in the answer scheme. Not true because the ratio is not constant. Okay, doubling L does not double V. All right, so in this case, they mean directly proportional, not just proportional. Okay, last one. It's a fairly quick question, this one, quick 10 marks. The student decides to repeat the investigation, but replaces the resistance wire with a variable resistor. Complete the circuit diagram to show how the variable resistor and voltmeter um, are connected so that the current in the lamp and the potential across the lamp can be varied. Now, if you notice here, we're given the top line, and that top line is actually identical, pretty much, I think, to the top line in this picture. The only thing that's missing there is the V. Okay, and you notice in the mark scheme it tells you that you must have a voltmeter in parallel with the lamp. Well, if you paid attention at the beginning, you'd notice all you have to do is just add it back in. It's just been removed for some reason. Okay, you then um, have to add in a variable resistor. A variable resistor is just a resistor with an arrow going through it, okay, to indicate the fact that we can change its resistance. And so you need to connect that guy up and obviously add in the wires. And that's why it says variable resistor in series and circuit complete. And that's all. Okay, so again, I found using this question in mocks, for example, that students really struggled with this one. A little bit of a review of the previous question really helps. Uh, oh, sorry, the previous part of the question really, really helps um, to clarify to you what the circuit should look like and what the symbol should look like as well. All right, I hope that's clear. As ever, if you've got any questions, please let me know. And if you'd like me to answer a particular question in a video, again, let me know which question it is. I'll go and find it and I'll see what I can do for you.